Hi guys, welcome to another video from Little to Simple. If you're like us, then the odds are that you have never used DuckDuckGo. And if you're anything like a non-techie friends, then the odds are that you have never even heard of DuckDuckGo. Unintended. For the uninitiated among us, DuckDuckGo is a privacy-focused search engine that distinguishes itself by providing unbiased search results and offering a clean interface devoid of advertisements tracking users. Yes, you heard us correctly. Duck DuckDuckGo doesn't track user activity and in the privacy-focused world that we live in today, it is gaining popularity by the day and is currently among the top 5 most used search engines globally. At this point, one obvious question among those of us who understand how any search engine makes money is about how DuckDuckGo makes money without tracking user data and why the giants like Google do not take this approach. But before we answer this question, let's try to get everyone on the same page by explaining in the simplest possible way about how a search engine such as Google makes money in the first place. The Basics First things first, please understand that a browser and a search engine are two completely different things. Any browser can use any search engine. For instance, Google Chrome browser can use Bing as its search engine and Microsoft Edge can use Google as its search engine. Now that we have this out of the way, let's understand how a search engine actually makes money. This might sound obvious to some of you, but most search engines make money by showing you what you want to see. Don't believe us? Just search in Google about if coffee is bad for you. We are sure you would have found a lot of good and useful results about how coffee is bad for your health. Now that you're convinced convinced that coffee is bad for your health, can you go ahead and search in Google about if coffee is good for your health? If you are like us, you'd be surprised to see that Google shows a lot of good and useful results for this search query as well. Now you tell us if search engines like Google show you the correct or wrong results or if they show you what you want to see. This process of showing you what you want to see is referred to in technical terms as intent driven search. In simple terms, the search engines try to understand your intent based on the search query that you type into them and try their best to show you only those results that you would want to see. And most search engines try to understand your intent by closely tracking, collecting, curating and processing your browsing history or activity or data. For a long time, search engines did not have any problem tracking user activity, but as more and more internet users learned about how search engines function, they started becoming more and more conscious about protecting their privacy online until a point where most internet users today actually research about the privacy offered by a browser and a search engine before deciding to use it. But what most internet users do not understand is that for most companies such as Google, focusing on privacy is a double-edged sword as most of their users come to them because they show the search results that the users want to see and any excessive focus on privacy will not let them show in trend-driven search results. And each company came up with their own way to solve this problem and appeal to privacy-focused users. For instance, Google offers an option called as incognito mode which doesn't track the user activity. DuckDuckGo tried to capitalize on this exact problem that the large search engine companies face by launching a search engine that doesn't track any user activity and do away with the whole concept of intent-driven search results. But this raises two questions. Why will anyone use a search engine that doesn't show the results that they would want to see and instead show the results that are more pragmatic and how can any company make money doing this? Well, keep watching this video to find the answers to these questions. The Business Model DuckDuckGo operates on a straightforward business model. Unlike other search engines that rely heavily on advertising revenue generated through user data collection, DuckDuckGo generates revenue through contextual advertising based on keyword targeting. Contextual advertising means showing ads that are related to the keywords you search for. For example, if you search for best hiking boots, DuckDuckGo might show you ads for outdoor gear or hiking equipment. However, unlike other search engines, 
means DuckDuckGo doesn't track your searches to personalize the ads you see. Advertisers bid on keywords that are relevant to their products or services. When someone searches for those keywords on DuckDuckGo, the highest bidder's ads are displayed alongside the search results. This means advertisers can reach potential customers who are actively searching for products or services related to their business. However, DuckDuckGo ensures that user privacy is not compromised during the advertising process. Advertisers don't get access to your personal information or search history and your searches remain anonymous. Hence, there is absolutely no personalized advertising involved in the case of DuckDuckGo. Because the run on advertising spend is more in case of personalized ads when compared to contextual ads, most advertisers tend to spend more money for advertising on search engines such as Google and Bing and spend less for advertising on DuckDuckGo. This limits DuckDuckGo's revenue potential which indirectly affects their growth and there is little DuckDuckGo can do to solve this problem as their revenue potential is limited by design. As a result of this, DuckDuckGo might never be the next Google but it is a great option for privacy focused users as we have said many times on this channel, not all businesses are built to become multi-billion dollar entities and the world needs businesses that are built for the greater good rather than just for minting money and DuckDuckGo is definitely one such company. We would like to clarify that we are in no way saying that DuckDuckGo doesn't make money. They are a profitable company but their scale is highly limited due to their extensive focus on the user privacy. Similarly, we are not in any way saying that search engines like Google and Bing are evil in any way. Instead, they choose to go with one business model and DuckDuckGo chose to go with another business model. We would also like to clarify that we refer to Google multiple times in this video only because they are currently the largest search engine in the world and everyone recognizes them and not because we personally do not like Google or because we consider them evil. We also intentionally did not discuss legal battle that Google and DuckDuckGo fought several years ago as it is neither relevant nor adds any value to this video. Here's an interesting piece of information for those of you who have watched this video until this point. Having limited revenue potential has its own downsides. For instance, even though DuckDuckGo has its own crawler, they rely heavily on Bing to fetch a lot of their search results and then process the search results provided by Bing in the backend and show them in a privacy protected way to their users. DuckDuckGo does this because they lack the resources in terms of technical infrastructure to crawl and index the entire web using their own crawler. This results in a situation wherein Microsoft, which owns Bing, can shut DuckDuckGo down whenever they want by just cutting off their access to Bing. And if you're wondering about why can't they go with Google if Microsoft shuts them down, well, we have, in a kind of sort of way, already answered this question in a previous section in this video and wouldn't want to disappoint the YouTube algorithm by specifically answering this question here. So, from a business point of view, despite their good intentions, DuckDuckGo is dependent on one of their biggest competitors for their own operations. This shows that limited revenue potential can be a huge factor in a company's autonomy independent of their great intentions. Let's leave you with that thought and see you all again in the next video. Until then, have a good one guys.